Hey, I was in high school nine months ago and now I'm a software engineer at an AI startup in Toronto. In this video, I'll just help you learn about how you can become a software engineer if that's what you're into and just share what I've learned in the past few months. Although I am really early into this whole type of thing, uh, I do think there's a few things that might be useful to people that are in high school or uh, in university trying to get into software engineering. I applied to over 600 job postings in the past four months before getting this job and I had a total of six interviews, so I'll talk about all these things in this video. So first I want to start off with just mentioning last March in 2024, I got accepted into Waterloo Computer Engineering with the co-op choice. Um, so I just want to say if you're in high school looking into which university programs you, need, you want to get into, um, I would recommend going for something with co-op because nowadays there's a lot more focus on experience and skills instead of just which university you went to. So I'd recommend uh, going with something that has co-op options. Um, a lot of the Waterloo, uh, like computer engineering, software engineering, CS, um, they have like six co-op terms, each one being four months long. So yeah, if you go for a university program with co-op, you'll just get a lot more experience and a lot more opportunities as well because of the internal job boards of the university. It gives you a little bit of an extra advantage compared to just having to go through LinkedIn and Indeed applications yourself. So if you're in high school, definitely look into that. Um, next, I want to talk about um, like resume reviews and how to set up your resume, because this is probably one of the most important steps. Um, uh, you, you basically want to organize it by having like your experience section and then also a skill section. In the skill section, you'll, you'll talk about um, projects you've worked on, um, like, and what skills you used, like technical skills to work on them. And then in the experience section, you'll write about any actual work experience that you have. Obviously, when you're starting out, you're going to have a lot of personal projects that you've worked on over the years and very little experience. So just have your experience at the bottom of your resume. And in until you get enough experience, just keep it at the bottom. Um, there's a lot of videos out there, obviously, about how to write a good resume. So I'd recommend you go watch those and, and I'm not going to talk about that here. But broadly speaking, like you want to have your a list of skills at the top, like a summary. Then you want to have your actual personal projects section and then your experience section and then your education. Education either at the bottom or the top, depending on what you're doing. Um, and for each application, you want to uh, ca like tailor your resume to that application. So, for example, um, you, you might want to have a single master resume that ends up being longer than a single page, like two pages long um, in, in latex or something. And then for each application, you want to go through and just delete the non-relevant stuff to narrow it down to one page of exactly what you need. Um, and if you want to speed up the process, maybe you make like an AI resume, a front end development resume, a back end development resume, depending on your skills, if you have all these skills, um, just make all these different resumes. Um, and then you can kind of spam through applications a lot quicker. Um, for me personally, near the end of the of the applying period, like in December, fourth month into it, I was kind of just going through just like putting in my pre-made resumes, just applying with like four clicks for each application. Um, especially if they don't need cover letters, it's like really, really quick to go through that. The next thing I wanna talk about is messaging people in upper years to review your resume. This is definitely something that you should be doing. Um, even initially getting into your program, you should immediately go and message people on LinkedIn that are in your program, maybe two years um, older than you, maybe a year older than you. That's what I did. And I had like two connections that were in computer engineering that were one or two years older. One of them actually got a co-op at Ford, which is great for him. Um, but yeah, I just messaged him to check out my resume and he gave me some feedback and I fixed it. And at a certain point, maybe after about like three, four revisions, You'll notice that you get to the point where it's kind of like nitpicky stuff, like personal preference type adjustments. And at that point, you're kind of good to go. You can just start applying everywhere. But the next thing I want to talk about is um, actually going through the interviews. So once you've applied to 
a few hundred applications, um, you'll likely get at least one interview. It took me about 250 to 300 applications of not hearing anything back until I got my first interview. Um, don't don't overstress about it. Um, you will definitely get more chances, but take it seriously. Um, you want to research the company thoroughly, like at least 30 minutes just researching what the company does um, and kind of make a document that you're going to have open during your interview. Uh, if it's a remote interview, then you'll you'll be able to have like a, your Google Doc open on the side with your notes. And you definitely want to answer questions about like, why do you want to work at this company? Um, like, why are you interested in this specific technology? Like things like this, they'll definitely ask you about the company to see if you've researched it because they want to get people that are committed and excited to get this role. Um, so definitely research the role, research what you're going to be doing. Um, and also kind of prepare for uh, like, they'll ask you, for example, if you're applying to an AI company, they'll ask you like what AI uh, projects have you worked on. So just write down two or three projects and a lot of technical details and stuff like that, that you, that you can remember um, so that you don't need to remember stuff off the top of your head during the interview. You can look at your document and just like quickly say like a bunch of things about your project. It's a lot more efficient um, and I think it'll help you out during your interview. Also, um, in terms of soft skills, you can always talk about how your um, your values align with the company. For example, if in the job posting they write about um, someone who is transparent and honest and things like that, you can always say that those line up with your values. Yeah, those are basically my points on uh, the interview. Next, I want to talk about uh, networking. You should definitely be networking. Like if you're looking for a software engineering job or internship, definitely tell your friends and family because they can ask their connections and their network in case anyone is looking for um, it, like an intern or like there's an open position. Um, I know a majority of my friends, like a lot of the people I talked to at Waterloo ended up getting a job through family um, or knowing someone. So definitely take advantage of this. Um, if, if you get your first like one or two jobs through friends and family, that, that's going to give you a huge boost and you're going to save a lot of time um, not having to apply to 600 jobs, if you know what I mean. So definitely take advantage of this. Um, message people on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Uh, next, I want to talk about the fact that this whole thing is not a one-time it's not a one-time task that you do and you finish. Um, it's something that becomes part of your routine. So applying to jobs during the application period, um, it's just going to be like like one hour every one or two days that you just need to sit down and apply to jobs. You can skip a few days here and there, but it's kind of like a consistent thing where you're you're applying to like, I don't know, 40 jobs per week or something like that. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a habit that is an ongoing thing until you get a job. Um, it, in addition to that, there's a bunch of other stuff that you need to do. So for example, doing leak code problems are definitely gonna help you out for the interview, especially if it's, um, yeah, like for software engineering, they're almost always gonna ask you a leak code problem on the interview. Um, if, if you see in the job list, job posting, that they talk about a specific language like Python or C++ or Java or uh, JavaScript, make sure you practice that specific language on Leet code and just be ready to answer questions about it and the technologies that they use. So if they ask you if, if the job posting has stuff about Next.js or React or um, making a backend for a website, like make sure you know how this stuff works and have some notes ready in your document before the interview. Um, but I think generally they ask you, if they if they do ask you a LeetCode problem, they'll ask you which language you wanna use. So if you're comfortable in C++, just make sure you're ready for those problems. Um, and if you're just going for an internship, it'll likely be like a medium level difficulty on LeetCode, um, but it does obviously vary depending on the company. Um, and yeah, even after getting a job, I still continue to do LeetCode and I still continue to watch videos on um, like relevant technologies and stuff like that uh, 
for future um, job applications and stuff like that. Um, and the final thing I want to talk about is if you don't end up getting a job, make the most of the time you have because you'll definitely have a lot of free time. Um, work on personal projects. Um, you'll learn a lot and it'll be great for your resume to, to write about the specific technical skills from those projects. Um, so for example, if you're looking to get into front-end development, make a project with Next.js, React, Tailwind, Express.js, and other front-end technologies. Uh, well, Express.js is for a backend, but yeah, like use those technologies to make a website or something, put it on your GitHub, and then um, add it to your resume so that you can talk about it in your next interview. Um, if, you're, if you're looking into AI jobs, maybe use PyTorch to train your own lar large language model on your GPU, or use OpenAI's API um, to make some product. Uh, but you get the idea, just use relevant technologies um, that you want to discuss in your next um, interview or job application um, to improve your resume and chances of getting a job. The last few things I'd like to talk about are kind of, are kind of the miscellaneous things. So you also might want to make a personal website. It's pretty easy nowadays to make one and you can just host it on GitHub pages as a static site for free. So you can obviously look into making that. Um, it, it'll not only be good for showing off your um, your experience and your skills and stuff like that and kind of like a almost like a resume that you can just easily share with a link uh, but it'll also show off your skills because you can you, you can if you want to you can add it to your um, personal projects if that's something you're into um, but mainly it's just a good thing to have on your, uh, on your resume to link to your personal website so they can check out more information about you. Um, speaking of that, uh, you need to make sure your LinkedIn is properly set up. Um, just update it with relevant information, your experience and skills, and make sure your profile picture is professional uh, and it just looks nice. Um, LinkedIn actually does help you get a job. There, there's statistics about this, about how having a good LinkedIn profile increases your chance of getting a job. So make sure you spend enough time in that. Um, and the next thing I want to talk about is balancing leak code versus real projects. There's obviously a big difference between doing leak code problems and working on real projects. Um, so just be aware of that. Don't spend all of your time on leak code and vice versa. Don't spend all of your time on just projects. You need a bit of both. Um, but you can lean more heavily into one depending on what you're up to. So yeah, but in, in terms of lead code, just to give my two cents on this, um, kind of do this, do like the daily problems, do like the, the weekly contests and just, you should be able to solve medium problems like most of the time by yourself without help, like with under an hour. Um, and once you get to like above 500, 600 problems solved, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're good for a long time for, for job interviews. Like you'll be able to mostly solve the problems there and you should be okay. So that's kind of like a ballpark answer aim for having 600 problems solved on lead code. But then again, if you're, if you're smart and you already know how this stuff works, maybe you don't, you only need like a hundred problems solved. So that's just kind of the general idea I get of that. Um, and yeah, you can obviously email people, um, to, to network, um, although that may, may or may not work as well. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the main idea of this video. Um, it takes a lot of applications to get a job, uh, to get an interview. Uh, make the most of each interview you get, research the company well, um, have a prepared document, and just continuously work on all of these things like building your skills, solving lead code problems, applying to jobs, and eventually it'll work out. So. Yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions below and I'll try to answer everything. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you.